Thank you very much for this interview that uh, coincides uh, with the 64th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You were there, one of the drafters. Has the Universal Declaration lived up to its promise? We have come a very, very long way. At the time, Europe was still divided into different and opposing nations. The Latin American continent was frequently under military rule. China was in a state uh, quite different from what it has become now. And the United Nations itself was still in the third year only of its existence and had not yet fashioned the whole system of organizations, which is doing a tremendously important work today. It UN, uh, UNESCO, it is ILO, it is WHO, all the organizations are there. What they do about refugees, about human rights. We have an, an uh, high commissioner for human rights who can go anywhere. She is fortunately a woman and a very active woman. So it would be completely mistaken to think that uh, the Human Rights Declaration has had no success. You cannot go into any country today without finding there organizations, defenders of human rights, who will make the government feel responsible whenever human rights are being violated. That does not mean that we have achieved all we wanted. Far from it, there are still terrible violations, not to speak of Israel and Palestine, not to speak of what's happening in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo or of Sudan, or in many, many places, still things are going the wrong way. But we must hope that the young generation today, listening to the Human Rights Declaration, will find it possible to work so that things improve. This year is also the 67th anniversary of the United Nations itself. Uh, was created in 1945, and you were there also, you witnessed that event. Um, has uh, the United Nations, and in particular, the Security Council, uh, is it doing what its founding fathers intended it to do? I think the uh, Security Council is the organ that has had the most difficult task. It is the only one in the system of the United Nations which is supposed to react on breaches of peace, violation of international law. It has done so in a number of areas, but it has been stuck and has been made incapable, incapable of uh, uh, being, being up to what it was supposed to do because the composition of the Security Council giving the right of uh, veto to five countries, the five uh, countries who have won the Second World War, that is now 68 years ago. And it is uh, stupid to think that these five countries still are the masters of peace and of war. We must have a reform of the Security Council. Many people have hoped for this. And if we do, then it is possible that a more equitable way of handling conflicts will uh, appear. Up to now, uh, conflicts are handled with great restraint. It is sufficient that either the East or the West are in disagreement, and then nothing can be done. That is what's happening all too frequently. Also, we have more and more inner conflicts within a given country. 
And that is where the basic principle of national sovereignty, which is deeply engraved in the Charter, Article 2, Paragraph 7, makes it very, very difficult for the international community to do anything when things are going wrong within a given country. On 10 December, the Nobel Peace Prize will be given to the European Union and the three leaders uh, will be going to Oslo to get it. Uh, what was your rea reaction when you heard uh, that the Nobel Peace Prize was given to Europe? I will tell you, I am so proud of what has been achieved by Europe during the last half century. Uh, it was a very difficult subject and still is. It became even more difficult, difficult after the fall of the Berlin Wall because now Europe has to be construed with all the countries, not only of the West and the South, but of the North and the East. And that is a difficult task. Let me say it is not yet achieved. Uh, the persons who are going to Oslo to receive in a few days the Nobel Peace Prize uh, are not up to what we had expected of them, whether it is the president of the Europe Council or the president of the Europe Commission. Uh, they all are the president of the parliament. They all have immense tasks to perform, but their way of handling these huge tasks, the political, the commercial, the economic, and the ecological tasks, which are before Europe, they are not yet handled the way we would wish. Therefore, we have the feeling that this beautiful Nobel Prize was awarded a little too early. Let us hope that in a few years from now, we will be able to say, ah, well, yes, Europe has finally deserved <laughs> the Nobel Prize. Um, your book, Time for Outrage, has been an immense uh, success in the world. To what do you attribute its success? As you see, the tasks that are before the international community have not yet been performed. And for the young generation to hear an appeal like the small book that we have written together with Sylvie Crossman, the book that we have called in French, Indignez-vous, as has been translated in English by Time for outrage. I'm not sure it's the best possible translation. But anyhow, the content was an appeal not to accept the unacceptable. And that, I think, for the young generation, is the most useful thing that one can say. We do not tell them what to do, but, to tell, but we tell them what not to accept. And if they start by that, and if then they commit themselves to work for a better, a more just, a more equitable world, then we will have achieved our task. Thank you very much. Thank you.